Amen. Matthew 25. Amen. And we're going to begin reading at verse number 14. Amen. One more time. If you have it, amen. Shout out, have it. Amen. The word of God is also on screen for you as well. Matthew 25 and 14 is a very familiar passage of scripture. Amen. For those of us that are familiar with scripture. Amen. There may be some of us that's not so familiar. Amen. But we're going to dive right into it. Amen. And hopefully we'll all be familiar with this passage. Amen. As we come to a conclusion on today. Matthew 25 and 14. One more time. If you have it, shall I have it. It reads like this. It says the kingdom of heaven is as a man traveling into a far country who called his own servants and delivered unto them his goods. And to one he gave five talents, to another two, and to another one. To every man according to his several ability and straightway he took his journey. Then he that had received the five talents went and traded with the same and made them other five talents. And likewise he that had received two, he also gained other two. But he that received one went and digged in the earth and hid his Lord's money. And after a long time, the Lord of those servants came and reckoned with them. And so he that had received five talents and bought other five talents, saying, Lord, thou delivered unto me five talents. Behold, I have gained beside them five more talents. His Lord said unto him, Well done. Thou good and faithful servant, thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of the Lord. He also that had received two talents came and said, Lord, thou delivered unto me two talents. Behold, I have gained two other talents beside them. His Lord said unto him, Well done, good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of the Lord. Then he which had received the one talent came and said, Lord, I knew thee that thou art an hard man, reaping where thou hast not sown, gathering where thou hast not straw. And I was afraid, and when he had thy talent in the earth, lo, there thou hast that is thine. His Lord answered and said unto him, You wicked and slothful servant, you knew that I reap where I sow not, and gather where I have not strong. Thou oughtest therefore to have put my money to the exchanges, and then at my coming I should have received my own with interest or usury. Take therefore the talent from him, and give it unto him which has ten talents. For unto every one that has shall be given, and he shall have abundance. But from him that has not shall be taken away even that which he has. And cast ye the unprofitable servant into outer darkness." There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Amen. We want to use for a topic, amen, for the next few moments, willing to be great. Amen. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his word that we may grow and be sanctified thereby. Come on, everybody shout it with me. Say, willing to be great. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Amen. With change, amen, with change comes transformation. And without change comes stagnation. We learned on last week, amen, in Romans 12th chapter, amen, in verse number 2, amen, we got the admonition to be not conformed to this world, but to be transformed by the renewing of our mind. Amen. We had the insight, amen, come from scripture that transformation ought to be a part of our processes, our praxis, and our life. Amen. We learn, amen, from the word of God, amen, that transformation is not only necessary, but amen, we are admonished, amen, not to become stagnant. Amen. When one becomes stagnant, several problems or issues begin to arise. Amen. If we are take a little time to talk about what it means to be stagnant, stagnant is the absence of activity, movement, dull and sluggish behavior. Amen. When water becomes stagnant, the lack of flow causes scum 
to develop on the surface. Stagnant water has an unpleasant smell as a consequence to the fact that things are not moving. Things aren't progressing, things aren't growing. Have you ever stepped into an environment, amen, and when you came into the environment, you could see the scum on the surface? It's because that surface, that space, that place had become stagnant. Have you ever been in a place where you stepped in the space, amen, and there was a stale smell in the atmosphere? It's because the air hadn't been moving in that space and a stench had begun to develop in that space. Stagnation causes issues and problems to show up. Amen. Things start to get scummy and things start to get stinky. Amen. So we understand that becoming stagnant is a problem. When things go stagnant, there's a lack of growth and development. When things go stagnant, there's decreased motivation and engagement. When things grow stagnant, there's an increased risk of irrelevance. When things grow stagnant, there is a deterioration of mental and physical health. When things go and grow stagnant, there are missed opportunities. When things grow stagnant, there's a loss of a competitive edge. When things grow stagnant, relationships, relationships starts to strain. When things grow stagnant, there's economic and financial decline. When things go and grow stagnant, there's a lack of creativity and innovation. When things grow and go stagnant, complacency and resistance to change comes to the forefront. So we see that stagnation becomes the death of anything that is alive. Amen. When things go stagnant, amen, there's no progress and no improvement. Amen. There's no development. There's no career advancement. There's no ability to innovate or to adapt to changes in the environment or the marketplace. There's this decreased motivation when things just dry up and go stagnant. People start to feel unfulfilled and uninspired. And their enthusiasm goes down. And they, their productivity goes down. Their engagement, their involvement begins to increase or rather decrease in the wrong direction because things have grown stagnant. Amen. When things grow stagnant, people fail to evolve. And this failure to evolve leads to a loss of relevance in the spaces and the places where things they exist. When things begin to grow stagnant, there's a lack of activity and purpose that contributes to stress and anxiety and depression. And then we have physical health problems because we have this sedentary lifestyle. You got to move in order to stay alive. Things can't stay still. Things have to shift. People begin to miss out on opportunities. That this failure to take action results in losing out on what destiny has in store for you. You fall behind because you lose your sense of having a competitive edge because you are so still and stuck in the way that you have always done things. Relationships even become stale and strained and disconnected because things are not moving. Things are at a standstill. Productivity and unemployment and declining investments are all a part of the process of things growing and going stagnant. People become trapped in their old patterns and amen. It prevents them from innovation and fresh 
thinking. They become stuck at a standstill. They become complacent. And when change is necessary, when the environment is calling for change, they are stuck with the status quo because they have become so comfortable with the where they are at. So we understand that when things get stagnant, things die, things decline, things fall apart. So the question that we've been asking ourselves during this sermonic series as it pertains to champions of change, the question that we're asking ourselves is why change at all? I need to change because I definitely don't want to be stagnant. After hearing about all of the adverse effects of stagnation, I don't know about you, but in my spirit, I don't want to grow stagnant. So if it's necessary for me to change, I'm willing to make the necessary changes. The next question that often comes up is how much is this change going to cost me? And the answer to that question is it doesn't matter how much it's going to cost me. Why should we here and die? So it doesn't matter what the cost is. I'd rather die active than to die stagnant. And it's so amazing how some people grasp this, but others don't. I, 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 I'm reminded of a rapper that was popular when I was coming up. He said it like this. He says, I'm going to get rich or I'm going to die trying. And I'm not advocating for you to be like 50 Cent. But what I am advocating is that he had a mentality and the principle is applicable everywhere. Some people are so stuck in the way they have done it on yesteryear and on yesterday that they will not shift and it will cause them to lose their life. But there was this young man that decided that I would rather be dead than to die and live in the state that I'm in. And somebody on today needs to make up your mind that I would rather swing for the fences than to just sit here and let stagnation ravish my life. I'm not going to allow the enemy of my mind, the enemy of my attitude, the enemy of my environment Ironman, ride me of my future. I'm getting ready to move. Everybody shout right now. Right now because it doesn't matter how much it's going to cost because I know I can't stay where I'm at. I refuse to die the way I am. I'm getting ready to grow and go. Somebody need to make up your mind. I refuse to go out like this. I believe for better and greater and this is not the end of my test testimony. This is not the end of my narrative. I'm not going out standing. If I gotta go out, I'm going out in a blaze of glory. I'm going out with all my chips on the table. I'm throwing everything in the ring. I'm not gonna lose this fight because I didn't get out and fight. If I got to go out, you got to knock me out. And I understand what Mike Tyson said. He said everybody got a plan until they get punched in the face. Uh-huh. You got a plan. I know you got a plan into the swing hitch, but I want the enemy to know. But I'm ready to jump in the ring. And if I go down, I trust God enough that the God of my life is the resurrection and the life that's able to get me back up off the ground. I'm not going out like this. Make up your mind, clap your hands, and shout hallelujah. Uh-huh. The last question when we talk about cost is the question, is it worth it? When I'm willing to pay, is it really worth the price? And considering the alternative, the answer is an unequivocal yes. So right here in the text, we see a powerful narrative being played out. Jesus 
gives the parable, amen, which is an earthly story that has a spiritual meaning. He gives the parable of the wealthy ruler who goes away for an extended season. And during his time away, he entrusts his employees to be wealth managers of his assets. Amen. And the translation, amen, uses the term talent, amen, in the King James Version. It uses the word talent. Uh, but understand that a talent was a form of currency, just like dollars and cents is a form of currency for us. Talent is a form of currency. And modern calculations suggest that a talent during this era and age of Jesus was approximately two million dollars. Mm was approximately two million dollars but for the sake of simplicity amen we're just going to call a talent a million so let's just for the sake of simplicity let's make it plain that the rich ruler gave distribution to his three employees one employee he gave five million uh -huh. the other employee he gave two million to manage and the last employee he gave one million to manage everybody did not have the same starting point uh -huh. and I, I, I need to uh, emphasize something right about here you need to get over it mm, you need to get over it because you didn't start where somebody else started at you need to get over it and there's no need to obsess over what someone else has someone has five million as a starting point the other has two million as a starting point and the other has one million as a starting point but you don't need to obsess over what the next person has you need to just manage what's in your hands so while you're obsessing over what someone else has you're losing focus on what you have and that's the danger in focusing on what someone else possesses. You need to understand this family that what God has for me it is for me and I'm good with whatever God decides my lot is. I need somebody to get excited about that. Mm -hmm. In Matthew 6 and 27, Jesus says it like this. He says, who can add one inch to their height by worrying about it? You can't add nothing to your statue because what God has decided to be your lot is your lot. This is what God gave me and I have decided that it is well with my soul. I have come to a conclusion that what God gave me was good enough. I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Uh -huh. So I'm not going to waste my time looking at another. You're getting ready to be vulnerable to this disease of stagnation. I can celebrate you and what God has given you in a healthy manner. And I can celebrate me and what God has given me in a healthy manner. Amen. And we all should take a little time every now and again to just celebrate others you don't have to hate on what somebody else has and you can celebrate what you have you might not have what the Joneses have across the street but you have your reasonable portion and if you just work with what God gave you God will work it out on your behest uh, that part right there I thought y'all be praising right about here so we look at the parable the narrative the story there's the five million and the two million dollar persons and the scripture explains and unpacks for us that they 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 utilize what they were working with they worked their assets amen their willingness to work caused them to see exponential growth in their resources and the insight in this is as such if you work with what God has given you 
growth will happen. Did you hear what I said? If you work with what God has given you, growth will happen. It's not a maybe. It's not a possibility. It's not a sometimes. If you take what God has placed in your hands to manage and to steward, if you manage it in a God-honoring way, it will grow. Uh That's why the Bible puts it like this. It says, now unto him that is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power of God that's operating on the inside of us and we work out our gifts the power that's working in us is the power of God to bring about increased growth and development so we need to be encouraged you have the power to shift everything that's connected to you you need to encourage yourself you don't need to be discouraged you don't need to walk out the room you don't need to throw in the towel all you need to do is take what God has given you and work it beloved of God and as you're working what God has put in your possession you will find that God will bless your inner your effort, your talent and your investment it's time for you to stop giving up on yourself you've always talked about how other folk gave up on you but the real culprit is that you have given up on yourself and now you become stagnant and you're at a standstill you're not utilizing the thing that God has graced you with and the Holy Ghost has sent me by the house on today to encourage you to take the thing that God has given you that intelligence that work ethic that creativity that innovation that idea that beauty that brilliance and let God do something amazing with the anointing that's on your life you ought to shout hallelujah right sing ah beloved of God we see in the scripture that when the, um, the wealth managers utilize with the steward of all the resources had given them, that growth showed up in their life. And then there was the one talent, the one million dollar person, and, and, and he sat on his assets. Uh, I said he sat on his assets. Uh, you can abbreviate that word, but we ain't gonna be that wretched today. Uh, he sat on his dunking and he did nothing at all with what God had placed in his hands. He took no risk. He didn't give God anything to work with and as a result there was no productivity in his life. And what really happened was he dishonored the God given capacity that was on the inside of him because what God said to man in the very beginning in Genesis the first chapter was to be fruitful and to multiply and to have dominion over every environment that you find yourself in your family is supposed to be growing your finances is supposed to be growing yes your health is supposed to be growing your ministry is supposed to be growing if it ain't growing something is broken in that space because the uh, the, uh, the assignment over your life the mandate over your life is to be fruitful and to multiply the thing that I have given you dominion over you got 
power over the place and space where you exist. You're supposed to be in first place. You need to stop settling for seventh place. You need to stop settling from being disqualified. You need to decide that God has graced me for better than this. This ain't for everybody because you mad because I'm telling you to change. You ain't got to change, baby. I'm just here. I'm the messenger. I'm just here to give you the memo. I'm just here on behalf of heaven. If you want to stay the way you are, you can stay right there. But as for me and my house, my temple, my body, the things that are connected to me, everything that's in my life got to grow. My family is getting ready to grow. I'm talking about me. My finances is growing. My future is growing. Every ministry in my hand, it got to grow because God lives on the inside of me. I am created in his image. Everything I touch got to prosper. Everywhere my feet tread, I possess. You got to make up your mind. You got to shake your head and say enough with this defeated mentality. This defeated mindset. I am more than a conqueror through Christ Jesus our Lord. Shout hallelujah. And glory to his, his name. He dishonored God. He dishonored God by not utilizing the capacity that lived on the inside of him. Uh -huh. Don't you remember in the book of Genesis, Cain and Abel, God had no respect for Cain's offering. But God respected Abel's offering which means that they both came and called themselves giving God something but God looked at one offering and he rejected the offering because it was not an acceptable offering beloved of God don't you deceive yourself so many times in life we are talking about we're giving God our all but God is saying you have never really surrendered your whole self to me and that's not an acceptable offering so we're wondering why our lives aren't prospering we're wondering why our lives aren't blessed we are wondering why we're going from failure to failure and God is waiting for us to give him an acceptable offering if your offering is contingent on the persons next to you that's not an acceptable offering if your offering is determined by the environment that you're in that's not an acceptable offering if your offering can be manipulated by your circumstances, by your comforts or your discomforts, it's not an acceptable offering and God ain't going to receive it. So I came here to push you on today to look at what's in your possession and decide I'm giving God an acceptable offering right now. I said right now yes yeah, so 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 the, the wealthy ruler returns after an extended season and he gives out a performance appraisal and he says to the five and the two talent persons he gives an answer and a report uh -huh, of what they have done the five and the two talent persons uh -huh, they report to uh -huh, the wealthy ruler that we have done double the thing that you placed in our hands. We have multiplied it. We have been fruitful. We have had exponential growth with the thing that you placed in our hands. And then as a response 
uh, to their report the, the wealthy ruler says uh, well done good and faithful uh, there is joy unspeakable in your future uh, and then the one talent person uh, he shows up and he gives an answer and a report of what he has done uh, and he also receives an assessment uh, from the wealthy ruler uh, he also who had received the one talent came forward saying master I know you to be a hard man mm. reaping where you did not sow mm. gathering where you scattered no seed Hmm. and I was a friend hmm. and I went and hid your wealth your talent in the ground here it is you have what is yours and we see that the one talent to wealth manager had a completely different posture all he had was excuses reasons why he could not prosper and succeed reasons why he could not excel I don't have enough money I don't have enough beauty I don't have enough education I don't have enough gifting I'm too black I'm too white I'm too poor I'm too rich I'm too prestigious I'm too infamous I'm this I'm that excuse after excuse oh look at your face after excuse but the Holy Ghost sent me by here on today to say no more excuses the reason why you are not growing is because you're not stewarding appropriately what I have placed in your hand and if you would just work what I have given you you will find that I am able to do just what I said I was able to do which is exceedingly and abundantly above but you need to stop making excuses you got an excuse this is the reason why I can't praise God this is the reason why I can't come to church this is the reason why I can't give him glory this is the reason why I'm so distracting this is the reason why I can't do nothing in ministry you got an excuse after excuse after excuse and the Lord is trying to shake you out of your excuses on today and say come out Satan the Lord God rebuke you I didn't mean to preach this hard his master answered him and gave him a report based on all of his excuses he said you wicked and you lazy servant you're nasty you're a nasty snake you are evil, sorry, no good, wealth manager. And I've been gone long enough for you to do better than this. Oh, y'all don't like that part. Ah. Why are you in the same place that you were on last year? Ooh. You're wicked and you're lazy. You knew that I reap where I have not sown and gather where I scattered no seed. You should have invested my money with the bankers and at my coming, I wanted to receive what was my own and interest. Woo, Jesus. Oh, man. I lost the crowd right there. No, I want my money back and interest. Come on, look at the... Oh, don't look at them. Just put your hand on yourself because they too mad right now. Put your hand on yourself and say, and interest. That's the part for me. Woo! I want you to do something with the God on the inside of you. Glory. So he took the talent from him. 
and gave it to the one that had 10 and then gave him a rebuke. He said, everyone who has more will be given more and he will have abundance. But for the one that doesn't have anything, I'm going to take the little bit that he has. I think I'm walking around with some folk blessings. I really do. I really think I am. I really believe because people are showing up at my house giving me $1,500 for no reason. Just for no reason. Like, hey, I got $1,500 for you. Here you go. Hey, I want to pay that off for you. Hey, I, 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 you know, I, I don't pay for some of my, of my bills. There's somebody that's paying my utility bills for me. Maybe I'm talking too much. <laughs> Woo! You know what is happening? To him that has abundance, I'll give you more. I'll give you more. God is saying to everybody in the room that I have put it in your hand for you to do something with it. He cast that servant out into outer darkness. He says, I'm separating you from my presence because your presence is frustrating the grace that's on my life. He says, there's going to be weeping and gnashing of teeth in this place where folk have been separated from God. I'm looking to have God bless my life, not to separate me from his presence. Because in the presence of the Lord is the fullness of joy. I know that God has more in store for my life and everybody in this room on today the Holy Ghost sent me by here to tell you that God has more in store for your life on today you don't have to settle for where you are looking for passion I'm looking for direction I'm looking for value it's in God somebody shout hallelujah beloved you can have a great marriage you can have a great business and you can have a great career at the same time somebody shout God give me more I'm going into my future and God is going to bless my future I understand that my solution is in serving God because as I serve God God's going to put more in my hand and I'm going to turn that thing that God has placed into my hand into a miracle somebody ought to shout a miracle is my portion I'm not going to settle for the death sentence. I'm going to live. Transformation is going to shift my life. That's getting ready to turn in my favor. Every context, every paradigm, every situation, every circumstance. Because all I got to do is trust God for more. And as I trust God for more, God has shown me that he's God over the whole universe. He has has all power in his hands he has all presence in his hands he has the ability to turn everything that I need in my favor so I'm going deeper in God and the deeper I go in God the deeper, the deeper I dig in the ground and put this seed in the ground the more it's getting ready to spring up it's not over for my life I'm just getting started you may give up on me but it's long as I got seed in my hand I'm going to put that seed in the ground and I'm going to watch God grow the anointing in my life I'm going to watch God grow the value in my life I'm going to watch God grow yes the gifting in my life I'm going to watch God grow the ministry in my life I'm getting ready for higher heights God is getting ready to take me to deeper depths God is getting ready to stretch me Wow, this is not my end. This is just my beginning. Shout glory. We are standing all over the house. Every 
everybody in the house has a deficit. <laughs> and let me talk to you about your deficits. Nobody cares. Woo! Oh, pastor, pastor, pastor. Nobody cares. Not even God cares about your deficit. Why should I? God doesn't care about your excuses. Sorry, not sorry. I'm sorry because it's a tough message. But I'm not sorry because it's a true message. And the truth shall make you free. You have a responsibility to be great. I'm talking to you. You have a responsibility. I said a responsibility. Not a choice. You have a responsibility to be great. You're supposed to be saved. Sanctified. You're supposed to be Holy Ghost filled. Fire baptized. You're supposed to have Jesus on your side. You're supposed to be running for your life. It's your responsibility to be great. And God has the power to make you great. He said to Abraham, I'll make your name great, son. Ooh, all you got to do is trust me. All you got to do is lean on me. You have a responsibility to grow. Everybody shall grow. You have a responsibility to develop. Everybody shall develop. You have a responsibility to expand. Shall expand. Woo! You are responsible for the gift that's on your life. You're too anointed to stay where you are. You're too gifted to remain in the state that you're in. You're too capable to give up and quit. There is no quitting in God. Can't quit. People can quit you, but you can't quit. As long as you don't quit, God let them leave you. Says when mother and father forsake you, I'll be right there. Woo. To lift you up. I never knew what that scripture meant until my father left the scene. He didn't forsake me on purpose. He forsook me because that's the way love goes. God gives and God takes away. But I'm here. God is saying, I'm here. I am your God. Hey, and as long as I'm your God, be great. Stop the excuses. You have been given what it takes to actively take care, to give attention to, and to take risk. I said take a risk. And a risk really ain't a risk. Understand what I'm saying. You can't hit a home run without swinging for the fences. And as for me and you, Ah, Pastor, you're speaking for me now, huh? By faith. We're going to take this bat and we're going to swing with every fiber in our upper torso, using our lower body to give us torque, to bring the bat to a velocity that will connect with the ball and send it out of the park. No more losing. Did you hear me? I said no more losing. 
I ain't losing my temper. I ain't losing my mind. I ain't losing my family. I'm not losing my finances. I'm not losing my future. No more losing. Because God is great. And I'm willing to be great. I'm going to just work what God has placed in my hand. Beloved, one last thing. If it's, if it's not growing, it's not God. Did you hear me? Uh-huh. Oh, I said if it's not growing, it's not God. God ain't got nothing to do with that. Everything that's God grows. I said everything. Look at John 15. Read John 15 verses 1 through 8. Every branch in me bears how much fruit? Much fruit. Every branch that does not bear fruit, I what? I cut it off. It withers and it dies. If it ain't growing, it ain't God. Something needs to change. Come on, shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. So what do we do from here, Pastor? He that has an ear, let him hear. The Spirit is saying to the church, what do you need to do at this moment right now? You need to look at what's in your hand. Stop looking at what's in my hand. You need to look at what's in your hand. Because God Almighty has put something in your hand. And you need to look until you can see what he has placed in your hand. Once you see what's in your hand, you need to pray for it. Our Father, which art in heaven, holy, hallowed be thy name. I see it in my hand. Thy kingdom come. I see it in my hand. Thy will be done. I see it in my hand. Let it be done in earth. Just like it is in heaven. Give me this day what I need. To make what's in my hand prosper. Hallelujah. Thank you Jesus. I need you to look at what's in your hand. Hold your hand out. You need to discover what God has placed in your hand and pray for it. It's a lie that you're not gifted. It's a lie that you don't have no talent. It's a lie that you can't bring no value. The thing that God put in your hand is the thing that makes you valuable to the earth. You need to see what brings value to the earth in your hand. And you need to start praying for it right now. Jesus. After you pray for it, then you have to work on it. Don't tell me you spend all night in prayer and you ain't doing no work. After all night prayer. You need to pray for it and then work it. <laughs> Everybody shall work it. And after you work on it, you need to exercise it. Because if you don't use it, you'll what? Ask that man with one talent. He didn't use what God gave him and God took it away. If you don't use what's in your hand, you're going to be like, I don't have nothing to offer. And it's true. Because you never utilize the thing that was in your hand. There's a ministry on your life. It's in your hand. Pray for it. Work it. Exercise it. Rinse and repeat. Do it again. Pray for it. Everybody shall pray for it. Work on it. Exercise it. Do it again. Pray for it. Work on it. Exercise it. Do it again. Come on, pray for it. Work on it. Exercise it. Do it again. Pray for it. Work on it. Exercise it. Do it again. Until God brings growth in your life. (laughs) 
And you got to make a decision right now. I'm willing to be great. You have been faithful over a few things. <laughs> Once you're faithful over a few things, what did the Bible say? It says, I will make you ruler over what? Many. After I make you ruler, he says what? Enter the joy of the Lord. Joy is my portion. Come on and shout hallelujah in the house. Don't wait for the battle to be over. I said joy is my portion. Praise God right now in advance. Where is your joy bells? That ain't no joy. That's a pit of pat. That ain't no joy. That's a man provoked praise. You better praise God like you know uh, that you're going to hear well done. Come on in the joy of the Lord. No more crying. No more dying. No more pain. Come on in the joy. I said come on in the joy. Come on in the joy. In the joy. That's what my praise is. Yeah. coming. I said joy is coming. It's coming in the morning. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy is coming. Things are getting ready to turn in my favor. Yeah. I cried, but they that sow in tears shall reap in joy. Shout yes, Lord. Shake yourself until the praise uh, just shatters your atmosphere. Shout glory. God, my God, my God. I feel like shouting right here. Sister Robin, Brother Elliot, the songwriter said joy is coming in the morning. Hallelujah. And I feel my morning about to break right about here. I need about four folk that feel joy in your life to leap forward. Shout hallelujah. going to win Woo! glory hallelujah hey come on I need everybody to put a hand clap right there 